All right, and I'm going to share my screen. Are you guys all able to see that? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Well, welcome everybody. I'm Jeff Pilisak, uh, Senior Program Manager with the Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship. This is the fourth um, webinar in the Frontier Incubator uh, Mentoring Networks theme series of webinars. And this is one of the, the topics that I know a lot of folks had mentioned early on um, when we started doing this um, series of webinars is how do you keep mentors engaged and how do you track and monitor um, what's happening during the, the mentor and mentee um, relationships. So we're gonna get into some of that stuff um, today, finally. Um, first of all, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. Just a reminder to put yourself on mute when you're not speaking and that will keep the noise level down so we can hear those folks who are speaking. Um, you can also, in the uh, top right-hand corner of your screen, you can select the gallery view, and that will give you a way to see everybody who is speaking, um, except for Lynn, who's not sharing her video. <laughs> and then um, you can also use the chat function. So feel free to type in questions or comments into the chat. And um, at least while I'm not speaking, I'll be checking that and monitoring that. And maybe um, Pamela can also help with that when she's not um, speaking. And then uh, last reminder is, again, this webinar is being recorded. And these recordings will be made available through the Frontier Incubators um, uh, website. Uh, first, let's do just a quick introduction for um, our guests, uh, panelists, and speakers. Um, Lynn, do you want to start off and just say a quick hello? Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. And uh, um, I guess you all know me, right? I'm the, uh, the director of Miller Center's uh, Mentor Networks, and I've been uh, doing so for a, a year and a half. And um, my uh, esteemed predecessor, Steve White's also on the phone, or on the call, so I don't need to go into much detail about what we do, but welcome, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Pamela. Hi, everyone. It's great to see familiar faces and names. Um, uh, so as the Chief Innovation Officer at Miller Center, I've been uh, involved with all, um, all of you. And then as also as a mentor, I've been a mentor with Miller Center um, uh, starting about 10 years ago. So um, mentoring is one of my most favorite things to do, and I'm always excited to be talking about it. Thanks, Pamela and Priya. Hi everyone, I'm Priya. I'm the CEO of Wilgro Philippines. Um, I, before I moved to the Philippines, I worked with Wilgro in India where I set up the mentoring program. And you know, one of the models that I studied a lot and got support from was Miller Center and I adapted the model uh, to Wilgro in India. And you know, we've had great success with our mentoring. So happy to share how I adapted and learned uh, you know, from Miller Center and took it to the markets that I'm in. Awesome. Thank you, Priya. And uh, welcome, Steve. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Steve White. Um, I've been a mentor at uh, Miller Center now in, in my 10th year. And I also serve uh, as an executive fellow focused on uh, curriculum creation and other sorts of needs of the entrepreneurs. Great. Um, thank you. So this is just a reminder of sort of where we are in the webinar series. We're, again, this is webinar number four. So this is sort of the last um, content piece where we're mostly sharing information um, with you with our, from our experts. Um, and uh, then we have a couple of more um, follow-up sessions and one more follow-up session in office hours afterwards. Um, this slide is, uh, uh, we shared previously, and this is just, again, to set a little context of where we've been and sort of where we are now. So we've talked um, previously in the webinars about kind of sourcing, selecting, onboarding, and training mentors, and sort of how we do all the steps right up until the actual mentoring process engagement takes place. 
Um, so now finally we're going to get into some more of the details around um, how to really make the, the mentor mentee engagement activities um, work well. So this is what we're talking about, care and feeding of mentors. And it's really, it's more than care and feeding of mentors. I mean, we, we know that um, the mentors that many of you use and that we use at Miller Center are volunteers. And so, and often they have a high level of expertise and very accomplished in their fields. We wanna do what we can to take care of them. And we're also interested in making sure that the relationships that we, they have with the entrepreneurs are, are effective. And so how do we make those things happen? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we're basically gonna cover um, four things. Um, the first is really, how do you go about monitoring and measuring the entrepreneur and mentor engagements? How do you, how do you track what's happening um, during the engagement and how do you get um, uh, input and feedback from the mentors? Um, we're also gonna talk about engagement opportunities for mentors who are not assigned specifically to an entrepreneur. So this is where you have maybe gaps in the cohorts that you're running or the programs that you're running. What other activities um, can mentors get involved with that will keep them engaged so that when you actually need them to mentor with an entrepreneur, they're still um, connected with you and interested in what you're working on. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about some activities or um, things to uh, show your appreciation and recognition of the mentors. Um, and then resources is just a few things that we'll share and make available to you actually after the webinar. Um, so with this, I'm basically gonna turn this over uh, primarily to Steve and, and Lynn, um, but Priya and Pamela, feel free to jump in in places where you've got stuff to add. Um, Steve, I think you're gonna cover primarily the first two points and then Lynn is gonna focus more around, um, focus more on the mentor appreciation and recognition. All right, Steve, Thank you wanna? Yeah, thanks for yeah. the intro and uh, yeah, certainly to Lynn and uh, Pamela uh, and Priya, uh, please jump in um, with your thoughts as well. Um, since this is my first um, of these webinars, I, I, I may cover a couple of things that have been talked uh, through in, in the past, but I think they're of paramount importance. And the first, the first is, is that the mentors really only care about the social entrepreneurs. The program and all the rest of that stuff is interesting and important, but what's critical is the social entrepreneur. And that's the, where their energy and their passion is focused. So what that means is the first in, in critical thing is the quality of the social entrepreneur. That is that if your uh, program is screens for the, the best talent, uh, the most uh, potential for social entrepreneurs doing the greatest amount of you know, positive work, creating greatest impact, um, then the, the mentors will naturally gravitate to them. And so I would suggest that one think about that right from the get go is that the, the relationship that develops is really dependent upon the quality of the people involved, both the entrepreneurs and the mentors. The, the second thing is uh, we do a lot of work around mentor and social entrepreneur pairing. Because our programs typically last multiple months, uh, there's a relationship that gets built over time. But what's important in that relationship is the value that's exchanged. And I, and I really truly mean that there, there is value going in both directions. If you ask the mentors what they get the most out of, they say they learn from the social entrepreneurs and that's the most valuable thing that they get. The, the, the second thing is that the social entrepreneurs have particular needs and it, they are already understand the gaps and the things that they're struggling with. And so if you can find an, a mentor who has the, an experience in those areas and has a skill set, 
has the ability to listen and understand, uh, has the right empathy profile, um, is not a, an individual who directs but asks good questions, then that pairing works. And that is, again, that uh, the magic happens there. Um, the, the third thing is that at GSBI, we have a structured curriculum and the structured curriculum helps uh, the, the mentors move through the program in a systematic way. And the, the, the curriculum is not uh, done in such a way that it's formulaic. In fact, what it really tries to do is establish some principles that in, ignite a conversation between the mentors and the social entrepreneur. And then the customization and the real value happens. So the, the curriculum in our programs is quite generic by intention. And the, and the real customization and the real dialogue happens uh, because they focused on areas in a systematic way and the mentors and the social entrepreneurs can work kind of hand in hand uh, through that. Um, it, it really then takes the pressure off of the, of the mentor to just uh, to uh, have to jump around to different things or just handle pressures of the day. Because in fact, what our program tends to do, our goal is to help pull the organization apart and look at the components individually and then build them back together again in a much more strong way. And um, whether you have structured curriculum or you have a series of goals, my suggestion is for the benefit of the mentors and the social entrepreneurs is a little bit of structure goes a long ways. And so that my, that's my first three recommendation. Be scrupulous in who the entrepreneurs you select. Think about pairing in terms of skill sets and personality profiles and other sorts of things. And then put a little infrastructure around it so that people aren't having to create things um, on the fly. Now, it, in our in our program, and I would suggest in your program, there are touch points. Uh, I think Jeff's calling them a test period fit check. It, it really, it's a series of touch, touch points to make sure that uh, the, the um, program is uh, moving along at the appropriate speed, that the relationships between the mentors and the social entrepreneurs are, are being built, uh, and that there is some um, um, in, energy and trust that's being brought into the, the relationship with them. And uh, you, you'll be surprised uh, at the candidness of the, uh, the feedback that you'll get. Um, often it starts where the, the social entrepreneur, and I know this is true in many cultures, where the social entrepreneur feels as though the mentor has a, you know, a, a um, higher position in the, in the, in the society or are uh, uh, required to have a level of respect. And we tried to make this, uh, and I would suggest you do the same, where there is a partnership that both people are working towards a common goal and they're using the strengths of uh, the mentor's experience and the passion and the cultural understanding of the entrepreneur's uh, impact. And those two things are the leverage uh, that, that creates a better result. We have a, uh, an enterprise assessment tool uh, that we probably can talk more about that Jeff can make available to you, which really looks at the organization and, and tries to identify where they are in their progression. Thanks, Jeff. And so every, every social entrepreneur coming into the organization uh, is in need of um, some amount of capacity development. We, we identify them as gaps. So where are they in the, in the development of their organization? And by looking at that and having that assessment being done often together, between the entrepreneurs and the mentors, now all of a sudden you get alignment between them. And the, the assessment tool, it gives enough specificity that in effect you can kind of walk through them point by point. We're not expecting per perfection in anything, we're expecting progress. And progress is satisfying, both to, to the entrepreneurs and, and to the mentors themselves. 
go back uh, one, Jeff. Yeah. So pairings and relationships between the social entrepreneurs and the mentors are not always perfect. And you may hear some rumblings in the background and uh, sometimes th th there's some frustration and so on. And it's good to check in with the mentors them, and see the, how the progress is being made. And in the cases where there is a delinquencies of the deliverables and or some other sorts of problems there, then you can work proactively to try to improve uh, that, to solve those sorts of problems uh, or, to, or to put them on, on a better track, which may include bringing in uh, an expert. So if they're stuck in a particular place, they, 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 they can't seem to get past that then someone else can come in and, and sort of help uh, unlock that part of it and, and keep things moving. Um, the tracking sheet uh, is important because that gives the program managers uh, and, and the ability for the mentors and the entrepreneurs to be able to report how they're doing. It's not very detailed. It's not like homework assignment where you're, you're, there's a grade or something like that. It's just basically saying, where are they in the progress of the, uh, uh, in, in the program? And are, are is there are certain instances where entrepreneurs are falling significantly far behind and th there's a reason for it. So this is sort of a, uh, a red flag if people are falling far behind. Now we give the mentors the ability to skip around a little bit in the program. So they can basically look at a particular module and say, well, this is not really important to my entrepreneur, or they really have this already nailed and I, there isn't anything else I can tell them that they're gonna be able to help them. So we're gonna jump to the next one. That's okay. The, the mentor uh, exercises their own judgments and, and in, in uh, cooperation with the, with the entrepreneur. So again, this isn't uh, um, you know, like a, a timesheet uh, or uh, an attendance tracking. It's really just the progress to making sure that there isn't uh, something that comes up that uh, is unexpected. Then the last point here is that um, we uh, at the Miller Center are all about continuous improvement. And so the, the only way that you can know where you are is to provide uh, meaningful surveys for both the entrepreneurs and the mentors to be able to understand what's working well, what's not working well, what things have the greatest amount of impact, what things are sort of just um, busy worker exercises, how it fits with nonprofits versus for profits. Uh, you know, are there issues with respect to diversity and gender and, you know, all these kinds of things. So feedback uh, is, is critically important. And not only that we have them, uh, the mentors fill out the, the, the survey, like an online survey, we also have time where we, they get together and we spend time with them and they give feedback as a group. And that gets recorded uh, in a series of notes and then that helps us sort of uh, uh, improve the programs as, as time goes on. Hey Steve, I wanna um, pause here for one second. Um, one of the, the first item on this list that you started talking about this test period fit check this was actually something that was brought up by Priya that she mm -hmm. does in her program. And I just thought maybe we give her a chance to elaborate a little bit on, on what she does. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so I think, you know, I think this, this is really a very critical piece, I think, because there needs to be a buy-in, I think. You know, I think um, Steve was talking about that mutual benefit, which I think is really critical. So both the mentor and the entrepreneur feel like they're both, you know, gaining some value from the engagement. And I think this test period is really, you know, a great way to assess how that relationship is building. And there are a couple of ways that we do that. One is that, you know, before we, which kind of um, links to some of the things that we've been discussing on the earlier um, you know, sessions is that we do have a, we spend enough time in that matching and we do have some informal interactions before we actually assign uh, the mentor and the entrepreneur to each other. But we also have um, a first 
uh, a test period in two ways. One is that we do have something called a diagnostic panel, which is kind of where we create the milestones that the enterprise, you know, is going to achieve through the incubation program. And the mentor joins that, um, that advisory group and that diagnostic panel session where we actually get to see the mentor in action, sharing advice, engaging with the enterprise. So that's one way for us to kind of understand if the skills and the experience is really a, you know, value adding to this company, but also kind of seeing how the mentor and the enterprise or the entrepreneur kind of engage with each other. And after that, for a period of, you know, at least three months, we track very closely uh, you know, how the relationship is going, you know, are they keeping regular calls, um, regular feedback from both the mentor as well as the entrepreneur on, are they clear on, you know, what is, what is the goal of this engagement? And um, is there a bit of that chemistry uh, that can happen once they get to know each other? So for that first quarter, we actually really, um, really the first few sessions, we really watched that closely. So the way that we are able to do that is that because we have, it's kind of a three-way kind of an engagement. So we have the entrepreneur, we have the mentor who's assigned, and from our team, we have a portfolio manager who's kind of just observing this relationship very closely, is on the first few calls with the mentor um, and the entrepreneur and, and has that first-hand kind of observation, which really is helpful for us to see how the um, engagement is progressing and how that test period is really going. And we do solicit, you know, fairly, and we do encourage entrepreneurs to be as open with their feedback. And sometimes you have to probe, right? Because everybody's quite grateful uh, that they, you know, they got connected to a mentor and usually only says very good things, but we try to probe a little bit more to kind of understand if the value has been created and, you know, there's a buy-in from the entrepreneur as well. Awesome. No, these are great. So these are really um, great um, ideas and tools and techniques. Um, first, to, to check in early and, and test how things are going, and then a few things to do to check along the way. And then, of course, the feedback surveys to gather feedback um, towards the end or possibly during as well. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead to our next uh, section. Oh. Steve, you already yeah. uh, kind of talked about this, but do you want to touch on this? Yeah, so because we have structured curriculum, uh, we, we struck the modules are done in uh, basically three or four week increments where there is a video with some PowerPoint and that's the learning that the social entrepreneur does. Uh, they do the, the first dialogue with the mentor. They're taking uh, drafts uh, or um, having conversations about what, the deliverable means and what, what sorts of issues it, 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 um, it uh, triggers, uh, both in terms of opportunities and challenges. Uh, and then the entrepreneur goes back in and works by themselves again to refine based upon the input they got from the mentor. And the last step, which typically happens, uh, you know, like I say, three or four weeks later, they approve the deliverables. And then that, that becomes the checkpoint to say, yeah, we're done with that module and we're moving on. Um, the, the idea that this has a rhythm to it uh, is, is useful. It's useful for the entrepreneur because they can allocate a certain amount of their really busy time to be able to work on these things. And it's also useful for the, for the mentor because they know that there, there is going to be progress and that they don't have to expect that the first uh, revision of a particular uh, deliverable is, is, is to be, you know, near perfect or something like that. that. And it really does provoke the sort of dialogue that you want the mentor and the entrepreneur to have. Now, we guide our entrepreneurs and mentors to meet weekly. Uh, typically, the calls last maybe an hour, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, just enough so that there's constantly in touch and there may be, you know, email dialogue is going back and forth and things like that in the interim, but it's just this rhythm that it gets everybody, keeps everybody kind of on their toes and involved and it helps the, have, helps the, the program kind of move along at a, at an expected pace. Perfect. Yeah. So the second one, um, these are engagement opportunities for unassigned mentors. 
Uh, we at, uh, at uh, the Miller Center now have in excess of 200 mentors and they're not all working all the time. Uh, some of them uh, will only do one uh, social entrepreneur a year. Some of them will do multiple social entrepreneurs per, per year. Some of them work on special projects. It just depends upon their appetite, their availability, their personal uh, priorities and schedules and, and so on. So what we try to do is to create opportunities for them to contribute that map to and, and it, it is consistent with what their availability is. So we go through in the selection process interviews and some mentors, um, including myself, like to spend time on the interviews and selecting the entrepreneurs. It's, it's fun because I get to see a whole bunch of different entrepreneurs and working on a variety of different uh, uh, projects and uh, uh, programs for impact. And, and, and that understanding and getting to know these people is a, is a lot of fun. There are other uh, mentors who are experts at particular areas and they can do workshops or webinars. So for example, if you have people who are, um, you know, uh, technology oriented or who have um, digital marketing skills or have understand search engine optimization and other kinds of things where the, the general group of mentors may not be versed in those sorts of things that people can actually contribute by uh, creating a small program or a webinar and having it recorded perhaps. And, and then that contributes to the knowledge of all the mentors. Um, same thing for, cur uh, for content or curriculum. So if you have uh, uh, content in or curriculum that you're developing, uh, the mentors are great to be able to come in and help uh, uh, contribute to it or provide a sounding board for the effectiveness of it. There's also experts uh, in other places too. So if, in, in some cases, the um, mentors have a particularly valuable skill set. So for example, people from the healthcare uh, or people who have uh, international law, people who have franchising expertise, you know, a series of these sort of things, and they may or may not be available to mentor full time, but they're identified as experts that you can call upon and they can contribute and then, you know, kind of get in, do a little problem solving and get out. And they haven't had to invest in, um, in a multiple months uh, into doing that. Um, we conclude our programs through uh, um, a series of business plan, business plan panels. So it's a, in effect, it's a, a mock investor meeting, an initial mock investor meeting where the entrepreneur goes through, and it's typically uh, you know anywhere from five to ten minutes of a high-level overview of their impact, their business model their growth plan, a little bit of their financials and how much money they're looking for. And the, the, the mentors then populate these panels uh, and they then give the, the, the entrepreneurs feedback as to the effectiveness of their communication and what was clear, what was not quite so clear and what areas that they could improve upon. And then the, and the, the entrepreneurs go back and they can improve their presentation before they go through uh, graduation. And I'm going to leave the mentor board uh, for uh, for Lynn to talk about because she knows more about that than than I do. Thanks, Steve. Lynn, are you uh, are you there still? Yes, sir. I am. <laughs> still awake. So, uh, Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So uh, another way that that uh, we're just starting, well, not just starting. It's probably about two years in um, to get mentors involved is to get uh, to get a core group of mentors who've been around a while to um, it started out by getting them together to give us feedback just directly on how we how Miller Center could improve the programs we offer for mentors and for for social entrepreneurs um, and the session was was the first couple of sessions were so well received that we've just been continuing on with with these uh, with quarterly meetings with with mentors who've been around for more than um, um, I, I believe more than two years or uh, thereabouts so that they've had some experience with the Miller Center programs and and then can contribute p potentially for uh, how we can improve. And so that's another way um, to get uh, get mentors 
to feel engaged in the in the programs if we don't happen to have a cohort running because that's um as as i'm sure all of you guys are experiencing it's it's a big push to get a group of social entrepreneurs uh, identified selected paired with mentors and then they go off and do their they do their projects um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other mentors for for Miller Center that we've got mentors new mentors expressing an interest to join um, monthly and we don't necessarily have something for them right away so it's nice to have a variety of things um, to offer them um, including these uh, the webinars and uh, if, if uh, they want to help develop curriculum or um, in cases where maybe a mentor has been around for a while but um, uh, is, is busy but wants to stay engaged, they'll, we, we invite them to be a part of the mentor board. Um, and then they, that way we, get, we, we keep them engaged and keep them excited about Miller Center's mission. And as Steve said, um, keeping our eye on the prize, which is helping social entrepreneurs around the world. Great. So, yeah, if I could just add yeah, a couple of Yeah, points. please, go ahead. Uh, and I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, we have this slide because this, you know, I've had some challenges when, you know, when, you know, you speak to a lot of people and, you know, like many mentors are excited to really come on board and support social entrepreneurs, but you're not able to assign them immediately. Um, and I, you know, to be honest, I've had some instances where, you know, there were a lot of people who came and then, you know, I forgot to kind of get back to a few people and they were not assigned for a long time. And then when I went back to them, you know, they were quite upset. So I think, uh, you know, it's really important for us to think about it, of how do we keep some kind of, you know, um, touch base with them on a regular basis. And I think some of these are great and we do it in a very similar way. But I think one of the things that, you know, why we the Miller Center and Miller was able to do is that we do have somebody who's responsible for mentoring within the team, whose responsibility it is to, you know, uh, like probably what Lynn is, you know, the role that Lynn is playing um, is really having that as part of somebody's, you know, we have a specific person who really helps mentoring and is constantly looking at all of these different areas that we've been discussing over the different seminars. So a couple of ways that we do it as well is that, of course, first is as part of selection of entrepreneurs. So since we are, don't do a cohort base, we have a slightly longer diligence process which involves a lot of different calls with entrepreneurs, discussions with experts, field visits with the entrepreneurs. And we try to involve some of the unassigned mentors where the skills match in the due diligence process, which is also a great way for us to get to know them better. I think we must absolutely leverage the fact that if we do events to invite mentors to be part of this, because they uh, really love that they can get engaged and they can get to know us better, but also the ecosystem better. And I think, especially when we have a lot of mentors who may not come from the social, uh, may not be exposed as much to social enterprise, to actually have them at some of these events where we are discussing issues around social entrepreneurship, issues that social entrepreneurs are facing and for them to participate in those events. I think we found that extremely valuable because it's also a little bit of an orientation for them into the sector. Um, I love the idea of the mentor board. I think I'm going to kind of try and see how we can implement that. But uh, something that we do on maybe, uh, you know, a slightly different way is that we do bring the mentors together uh, on a half yearly kind of, you know, basis where we invite some of the unassigned mentors as well. And they get to engage with some of our mentors who are currently assigned and they get to kind of hear uh, about their, uh, you know, their engagement and their kind of the value that they are finding in the engagements. And that always helps to kind of keep them motivated to stay kind of in our pool of mentors. So these are some of the ways that, you know, we've been trying to keep the unassigned mentors engaged. Excellent. Thank you, Priya. So, yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity here for um, engaging mentors based on their expertise, based on their interests, based on their availability as well, right? We know we, we often have mentors who may not be ready to commit to um, mentoring a social enterprise for six months, but they might be willing to participate in some of these other activities. And it's a good way to, to keep them all um, engaged. All right, thank you. So um, let's go ahead, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, to section three. So um, Lynn, I'll let you um, kick this off as well. And I think this is sort of our, this is where we get into some advanced mentor management. Um, and Lynn can talk about 
uh, what she does there. Yeah. So Priya, you touched on it in um, in it, when you just spoke, but we also we also do uh, quarterly networking events for mentors. Um, uh, at, in addition to this mentor board meeting. So in the, in the quarterly networking events, we, we, they're evolving into something unstructured. We had, um, we'd started to try and think about topics to make sure that there was, you know, a meaningful discussion about mentoring and social entrepreneurs. And what we discovered is that when any, the people that show up at these, we, and we have them in local wine bars or, or things, you know, in a local um, restaurant. And so, uh, they'll show up and they immediately, everybody starts talking about social, about social entrepreneurship and, and the enterprises they're mentoring or the ones they just finished or, you know, a, a topic that's a, of importance to, to something that's going on at Miller Center. We found we haven't had to do any sort of um, managing of the discussion because it's, uh, it's always really lively and uh, interesting. And so um, um, I, I, after, after two, um, uh, of these unstructured events, I'm absolutely convinced that they're, they're a great tool to get new mentors. They're a great tool to keep existing mentors excited. Um, you know, we generate lots of additional ideas for, for the new people who show up and, and want to get involved. Um, th they raise their hands right away for things. And so that the, these mentor networking events are really fantastic for getting new mentors, keeping um, old ones excited, getting new ideas. Um, getting a lot of energy around um, just the, the network and mentoring social entrepreneurs. The other thing we started doing um, many years ago um, after, uh, well, one of the other things that we do for uh, networking events is uh, Steve had mentioned that we have these um, end of session panels where mentors participate. We also have um, uh, an in-residence where, where it's, a, it's a formal uh, investor showcase. And so we invent we invite uh, the mentor network to attend these showcases when we have them. Um, and, and that's an opportunity to see live the social entrepreneurs um, and give us six, usually about a six minute pitch. Um, and it's the, the, a large class of social entrepreneurs and it's a, it's a very exciting and fun afternoon uh, for mentors. And then they, they get to meet other mentors and also social entrepreneurs. Um, uh, and uh, uh, for many years, we've been giving out thank you um, awards for five years and 10 years of service um, for social, for, for mentors in our network. Um, and, and, and uh, we would give them um, a, a, a nice painting and uh, these other things. But last year we, we implemented a new, a new um, thank you for, for 10 year service. And that is a, um, it's a, a memory book or a little bit like a, the mentor's yearbook of, of his or her um, results um, uh, their potential, their impact um, for mentoring the individuals that they had mentored for Miller Center over the 10 years. And um, we've been able to do this because we collect a lot of data on our social entrepreneurs. Um, and um, all of that data had been used for, um, you know, talking about Miller Center and the impact we have with our social entrepreneurs and the impact they have around the world but we can also tie that um, directly to mentors. So what you're seeing here on the slide is um, um, a summary of a mentor's impact um, that uh, this is a particular mentor from last year um, who had mentored uh, a number of, it, of organizations. It's hard to see the numbers here, but you can see the map. These are all the locations uh, where the mentor has at least been in conversation with someone. So those are the various places in the world this mentor has, um, has, has uh, traveled at least by imagination, if not physically. Uh, we also link um, the Miller Center is, is moving more towards trying to ha have a direct uh, report on the, um, the uh, sustainable development goals. And so we're also trying to educate our mentors about those and the, the particular um, sustainable development goals of this particular mentor are, are cataloged there. We also are tracking um, for a mentor, uh, the total number of organizations they have mentored, the ones that are still in operation, the total number of lives impacted by the sum total of all of the organizations that he's mentored, the lives that they've impacted, and also the amount of money that has been raised by the organizations um, that they have mentored. Now we're not saying, um, because it's not possible to determine 
the impact of something if you don't if you don't know what what would have happened to them with without their mentoring. So we don't have a direct correlation. We no one can say for sure what the impact is, but we can say that that the mentors were involved with these organizations. Um, and I think, you know, that, and those organizations, we can count the number of lives because we track that for other reasons. And so when we rolled this out last year, um, we, we presented it to uh, six or eight of our, our 10 plus year uh, mentors. And it was such a big hit. It made, um, it made grown men cry uh, to, to, to be recognized and to just see the benefit. And I think that's what, um, what Steve alluded to was that the most important thing that the mentors in our network are concerned about is the social entrepreneurs and the impact they have. And to have, um, have the mentors work illustrated in a way that shows the social entrepreneurs and the impact they had was a really meaningful, um, really meaningful, I think, to a lot of mentors. So this is something we do. Um, I, would, I would recommend uh, to, I mean, it, it was a natural extension of what we did, but it's, it's like, it's, um, it's, it's an, it was an amazing experience and uh, we're gonna do it again this year and I'll hopefully see more, more uh, adults crying <laughs> for, uh, for their, uh, the, the, the thank you that we're gonna give them, so. Awesome, thanks, Lynn. Lynn, I just, I just want to say, I mean, um, so I don't know if you, you saw that I'm, I'm, I'm a happy, proud member of this. And it was, I mean, so I will say that this has been, it's been a heavy lift um, for Lynn and the team to do this. And just the impact and being able, to, as a mentor, to be able to look at this um, not only seeing the impact and, and some of the stories, getting quotes from the social entrepreneurs and the, on the meaning that they had, that mentors we had um, in the social entrepreneur's life is just, I mean, this, this gets to why mentors are doing what they do. I mean, it's, it is because you know, of the, of the, uh, the ability and the, and the, the gift to be able to give to these uh, social enterprises and to, and, and so we can feel it, but then to have something that like codifies it in a way um, is just totally amazing. And it's transformative from my opinion. Yeah. And so the other thing is we had, you know, by the, there's a, there was a lot of pieces that were already existed in a lot of different files, right? So we have a lot of photo photographs from a lot of events. Uh, we have we have documents and summary um, investment summaries from a, a lot of social entrepreneurs that have gone through our program. All of that documentation existed for the purpose of helping our social entrepreneurs, and so it's not like we I had to go out and create a lot of a lot of new content. All I had to do was find it and put it together on a per mentor basis. So, um, so as you develop your programs and you're keeping track of your social entrepreneurs, think about um, the, the, the way that information can be dual purpose, you know, to, to not only are you um, helping the social entrepreneur maybe develop program materials and advertise their successes and, and, and those sorts of things, it's also going to help you advertise the success of the programs that you are offering to your social entrepreneurs, but it's also going to on a look in, in the, in a retrospective and it's going to be able to, to illustrate to the mentors the impact that they have provided as well. And so it's um, there, there's multi purposes for, um, for collecting data, for collecting photographs, for compiling um, summary presentations and those sorts of things. So as you're, you're going through think about the things um, think about the things that you're going to use to show the success of your program not only to the outside world but to the inner world of, of the mentors and the social entrepreneurs and Lynn remind us of who the folks are that receive this book so the 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 book that that Pamela showed you are, are they're given to mentors who have been around for 
uh, 10 years plus. So last year we gave it out to a number of mentors who'd been in, in 10 plus years. And then now this year we're going to be going um, for the, for the people who are, who have been around for 10 years and we'll, we'll go through it every year. The, the new, the new 10 year uh, veterans will get a book. So I realize for, for a lot of these programs, it may take you a while till you have 10 year veteran mentors, but yeah. it, it is something to think about. And that's where I kind of call this, this is sort of advanced mentor management. Um, when, you, when you do have mentors and your program has been around and you're reaching these milestones, I mean, these kinds of things, they take a, a huge amount of work and effort to make happen, but they're clearly really meaningful pieces for those who have contributed a lot to your program. Yeah, it goes without saying in the early years, we, we, we were, it was a lot less formal, uh, you know, so uh, a bottle of wine or maybe a little plaque or just a pat in the back uh, was suffices when, when uh, you're, you're getting, off, getting off the ground. Yeah, <laughs> and, and in reality, uh, the other thing that every mentor will say is you don't need to thank me for anything. That's the way it, 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 is, it seems like it's always been at Miller Center. The mentors say, you know, don't, don't thank me. Focus it on the social entrepreneur. So really it is a pat on the back, a, a bottle of wine. It was good. And um, the, the fact that we did these books uh, just was sort of like icing on the cake. And it was, it was um, you know, Miller Center's pleasure to be able to actually identify and, and recognize um, the value of these, these veteran mentors who've been around for so long. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, well, thank you for that. That was fantastic. So um, I wanted to just uh, mention again some of the resources that we touched on. Um, we talked a little bit about our social enterprise assessment tool um, that Miller Center uses at the beginning of each program. It's, it's really a self-assessment tool for the, for the entrepreneur to kind of go through and um, get a picture of where they are um, along all the different um, aspects of their their business and their impact model um, and it helps um, them to think about where they want to prioritize in terms of the work that they need to do and it's a really useful tool for the beginning of engagement and sitting down with a with a mentor first coming in um, and we, sh we shared an example of the goal tracking sheet that we use I'll make that available we're actually taking that sheet and we're digitizing it, so we're moving that onto our platform, but still a you know, the spreadsheet version of it is still essentially the same kind of tool. Um, and then I can also make it uh, available an example of the, the mentor survey that we use. It's fairly, some of it is somewhat specific to our program, the, the format and curriculum that we use, but again, it's just a reference point for you if, it's, um, if you find it useful. I'll post those things through, um, the Frontier Incubator uh, mentoring theme uh, Slack channel. Uh, and I'll make that available um, together with this slide deck. Okay, so um, this is where you guys uh, can do some work or start to think about how you can apply some of what you've heard here um, to your programs. And so your, your homework assignment, or what, I, what I'd like you to think about um, if you want to create um, and improve your mentor engagement and monitoring practices, you know, begin to define what the checkpoints are and activities, tools that you use to gather information about um, what's happening during the mentor and entrepreneur engagement. So you may have other ideas from what we shared, or you may pull and, and borrow from some of the things that we shared, and you may already be doing um, some of these things. Um, and then think about the opportunities for you to engage mentors who are not assigned um, directly to an entrepreneur. Um, what else can they help with to keep them engaged, um, you know, for the selection process or curriculum development or um, maybe a, a mentor advisory board? And then, um, Consider ways, and again, so you know, some of the things we shared here are a, a lot of effort, but think about ways to demonstrate your appreciation of mentors and recognize their contribution because you know, I, I know the mentors are often considered one of the most value, valuable pieces of 
accelerator programs. And I certainly know from that's true from the Miller Center standpoint. Uh, mentors are consistently rated as sort of the most valuable and, and important thing that the entrepreneurs um, gain from uh, participating in the program. Um, and then uh, think about for these activities, what resources you have and what you will need to support these things um, in terms of people resources, but also in terms of any materials that you might need to support this. Let's see. There's a question here from Chu Lee, and it says, I'd love to know more about how to make sure um, the mentors understand the curriculum. Um, in case we didn't engage them in the curriculum development, um, and we keep updating to newer versions of the curriculum. So that's a good question. Um, Steve. I don't know, Steve or, or Lynn, you want to respond to that? How do, how do mentors stay on top of, uh, uh, become knowledgeable about the curriculum that we have? Uh, I would vote for Steve since he was so key <laughs> in developing the fantastic curriculum that we have now. Yep. Probably as a result, at least of some mentor comment, but yeah, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> and some of them directly from you, Lynn. Um, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, so the curriculum is made available both to the mentors and the social entrepreneurs and many of the mentors, if not most of them actually go back and review the video and the, the slide decks and so on, uh, and the expectation for what the deliverable, the exercise that the entrepreneur is gonna do. So they refresh themselves. But uh, I think the key thing uh, that we do is that the first time a mentor is involved in the program, we uh, uh, identify them as a mentor in training or a co-mentor. And what that really does is multiple things. The first thing is, is that it, it relieves them of the responsibility of having to do a tremendous amount of learning uh, early on. Uh, they get the uh, sense for the, for the way the program works, the way the interaction works. They're learning from somebody who has experience and they can see the curriculum, they can understand the dialogue, they can see how the progress is made and they begin to get uh, their own understanding and start to think about how they're going to apply that understanding. The second feature that it, it does is that it, um, it, it's a self-qualification process. So if this new mentor is uh, in, in training or a co-mentor, they uh, may determine that they don't like it. And it's better to know early and, and, and you know, get them out. If they don't want to be part of it, that's just great. It's not a good fit. Um, that, that's fine. And that self-qualification uh, is, I think, is very important. The, the flip side of that self-qualification is that they develop a relationship with the, with the more experienced mentor, a lasting relationship, one that they, you know, that now they have a buddy within this, within the cadre that helps them uh, in, in many ways and somebody they can refer back to. And then when there's questions about other resources that typically the more experienced mentor will know how to get those resources. When a, when a question comes up about a particular problem, uh, they can use that mentor's expertise and experience to be able to, uh, to address it. Um, uh, and, and so I think that the, the curriculum itself kind of stands alone and the expectation about the, the knowledge of the curriculum for the mentors is not high. We don't expect them to be teachers. We, 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 the, the curriculum then establishes a framework. What we expect them to do is to be superb listeners and to, and to then start to hear what the entrepreneur is saying and help the entrepreneur um, navigate, if you will, through the, the, through the creation of this enterprise. And, and that part is done best by this uh, listening and asking the right question. And that part of it, the, the a new mentor will begin to understand that the most effective 
um, way that that the dialogue occurs is when the mentor is challenging the, the entrepreneur to think differently, not to tell them what to do, but to ask them the question that causes them to think in a more broad sense or to drill down on a particular problem or help them prioritize what they do. So I, I, we don't worry too much about do the mentors understand the curriculum in, in detail? No, they're, they're not teaching it. They're just being part of the process. And so that, that helps them uh, feel comfortable in using it in that way. Great, uh, thanks Steve. So we also have another question um, that asks, are you using a CRM system to manage your mentors? Uh, and, and do you have any to recommend? So um, I can answer um, some of that question. So at Miller Center, we do have a CRS, CRM system. We're using Salesforce um, as our main CRM system, both for mentors and for managing our social enterprises. Um, and we've selected that, I think, because um, it integrates with a lot of other types of systems and tools that we're using. So we have a survey, you know, our questionnaire tools that are integrated with Salesforce, um, our whole learning management platform that we now deliver the curriculum and videos and slides through, that also integrates with Salesforce. So we had some, you know, fairly specific needs. And I think, you know, for your programs, I, I think the, the CRM you choose is really going to depend on what your specific needs are and requirements are for, for that system. So I, I don't know if I could just off the top of my head recommend a, a specific CRM. I you should, should say that the, uh, the, the CRM of choice when I was uh, working with the mentor network was the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, what, what happened is, is the more mentors that you get, uh, the, the spreadsheet uh, runs out of gas and you got to go to some CRM thing. But we were, you know, transitioning from about 40 mentors to about 120 mentors. And, uh, you know, the, the spreadsheet was probably pretty good. And, um, uh, but beyond that, you're going to have to get something more sophisticated. Yeah, yeah actually, Steve, I, I still use the, the Salesforce to generate Excel spreadsheets to double check my work and things like that. So, I mean, um, there's nothing wrong with spreadsheets. They're pretty, they're pretty handy. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of jump in, I think at Wilbur, we have been using, you know, uh, Excel dashboards and, you know, spreadsheets. Uh, for both the portfolio management as well as you know the mentoring and uh, our you know our portfolio tracker has kind of the mentoring milestones and progress integrated into that and it is in an excel spreadsheet but having said that now that you know we are at a certain size especially in india we have now built our own mis system um Specific, you know, we started off building only parts of it, you know, as we've been growing. So the first part of the MIS for the longest time was only looking at the selection process and everything else has been on Excel spreadsheets and we've been using it like for the last five years, of course, constantly improving, you know, the type of things that we are looking at and improving the spreadsheets. But we are in the process of actually moving everything to an internal system that we've created, which I believe will be available for licensing later this year. So I can share more about that through the network once it's ready. But I think my sense is, you know, just agreeing with Steve, when you, you know, it's still manageable fairly well on Excel spreadsheets at a certain size. So because CRM systems, everything comes with a cost. And I think incubators, you know, our budget lines are, so critical and you know which donor is going to pay for that um, so I think we kind of I think you need to make you know you have to kind of get to kind of a certain mass to kind of make that shift and that big investment and actually having build, building those trackers and systems first on Excel spreadsheets what you want to track how often and getting that system right before actually investing in a CRM or any kind of an MEL system I think is important uh, given you know how tight our resources and resource allocation can be. So I would definitely suggest actually building out good dashboards on Excel spreadsheets 
getting your teams, you're going through a few mentoring cycles of managing your enterprises. And then kind of once you, once, you know, you're increasing the number of cohorts and stuff, then make that decision because then your systems are already in place as well. Uh, thanks, Priya. Um, and just to follow up that, we have a, a question from uh, Maboat at Rise. And he says, you know, they're using um, Excel, an Excel dashboard for mentors um, and progress updating. So the dashboard and progress updating are a burden for mentors. So what suggestions do you have? And it sounds like um, the mentors are updating this dashboard directly. Yeah, so maybe I can quickly answer what that. So uh, what we do is that our mentors don't enter into the dashboard or the Excel spreadsheet directly. Our team does that. What the, uh, what the mentors fill out is actually a very simple form uh, or a very simple version of that dashboard where it's really just the milestone and the progress. And our team, our incubation team, our portfolio manager is really kind of integrating into the larger tracker that we track for every enterprise. So that means that, you know, they, they don't feel too burdened. It's very simple. It's, you know, on a monthly basis or, you know, as frequently as our check-ins. Uh, so we try to simplify as much because it is very difficult to be kind of make them feel like, oh, it's so painful. They actually, actually, we've tried all kinds of things and, you know, many things have failed. So I think what we've learned is that as simple as that we make it and, you know, as less time consuming as possible in simple formats works best. Perfect. Um, thank you, Priya. Okay, so um, just to wrap things up uh, in terms of next steps for this webinar and for the next steps in the program. So I encourage you to think about the homework items that you have um, and see if you can start working on those. If you are um, able to start thinking about that and doing some, some work on that, uh, we will have our next um, seminar, which is a chance for a review and a more open forum discussion uh, about this work, which will be August 13th. So it's actually um, just about two weeks away. So a little, a little quicker than the, the last round we've had. So not a lot of time to work on it, but if you want to think about this and then come back and have a more open conversation, um, <clears throat> that's when we'll have that schedule of this uh, Tuesday, August 13th, um, for those of you in the Southeast Asia area. And then um, uh, if you have any specific, if you want to share any of the work that you've done or you have specific questions that you would like us to address in that next session, um, please post those on Slack and then we can make sure we come prepared to respond to those questions and then I can round up the right folks um, to make sure that we're ready to respond to those questions as well. Okay, um, and that's it for our webinar number four. Um, I first <laughs> wanted to thank um, all of our guest speakers here. Um, thank you, Priya. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Lynn. Um, and thank you, Pamela. And I wanted to thank all of you for participating again uh, in this webinar. And we will look forward to seeing you at the next review session. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. you all. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a great Bye. day.